Hello there, folks. Welcome to this video. And this video is titled, Don't Be That Trainer. Don't Be That Trainer. Now, I just want to kind of say something a little bit inconvenient and a little bit hard to take in, folks. The fact is, as a learner, we all know what irritates us as learners. Yet somehow, somehow, in the training world, trainers still do all the things that irritate learners. So there seems to be like this compressed, like crazy disconnect in the sense that we all know what's wrong. Yet there's trainers out there that continue to do what's all wrong, right? And it's just fascinating because I see so many trainers that know they should do different, but don't. They know they should do particular things but they just don't and sometimes yes i get it it's out of maybe they just they don't have the cons the context or the constraints where they can do things or they can't change what they're doing yeah i get that or maybe they just don't know any better or maybe they've just never heard different solutions to problems that they actually face right now we need to appreciate that how you show up and how you think about training has a direct impact on the success of your sessions, right? So in today's video, it's going to be a little bit comical. It's going to be a little bit, yeah, we know that trainer, right? And we probably all come across that trainer that probably has left a negative mark on you as a learner, so to speak. Maybe that person never read my book there or there, right? So definitely, we can all remember that trainer, right? So in today's video, I want to talk about 10 things, or it may not even be numbers, so to speak. We're just going to touch on some things that will really identify the person that is that trainer. We all know who that trainer is, right? Now, here's some things that that trainer. You never want to be that trainer. All right, number one is they don't actually make slides that are easy to read. Maybe the font is too small or the colors are wrong. So that trainer is the person that does not have conscious awareness around the look and feel of their slides, right? So if you've ever been that trainer, hopefully you've started to learn that you always want to do a visual check on your slides, right? You actually want to present in the room and you want to, you know, set it up and then go and sit in different seats so that you can see the slides and the font is big enough and the colors are good, right? And the colors are not too hard to read, right? And you don't want to have too much red and green, different topic another time, right? Anyway, so don't be that trainer that does not have well-designed slides. Number two, number two is that trainer that doesn't give breaks. Please don't be that trainer, right? And consciously aware master trainers, the people that have energy awareness are consistently giving breaks at the right times, and they're able to read the room. They know when to give breaks, how to give them, how long to give the breaks for. And I've recently done a video on breaks and the importance of them. Number three, you don't want to be that trainer that <laughs> blames the learners, blames the learners if they get confused or they don't understand. The advanced trainer, on the other hand, takes full ownership and responsibility around what may be happening in your room. And the great trainer is the one that's willing to say, mm, let me say that a different way. Or let me um, try and come up with a different way to explain that. Or, yeah, I've noticed that that hasn't landed exactly right or my intent hasn't come across there. Let me explain it a different way. Don't be that trainer that blames the learners and puts all the fault on them, right? We've all seen them. We all know them. Don't be that trainer, right? Next one, very simple one. Don't turn up late. Why would you do that? Be on time. And what I mean by on time is at least 20 minutes early. Why? Because you want to set yourself up, right? You want to be able to sit in the room. You want to be visualizing what's going to go on. You want to be planning out your session. You want to have everything set up, right? And that takes a minimum of 20, 25, if not 30 minutes, right? So don't be that trainer that turns up on just on time, right? And that goes exactly for the online environment as well. You want to have all your essence sorted as we say, right? So don't be that trainer that turns up late, right? Next one. This one um, we can all be guilty of, right? Now, this one is not checking your equipment or your laptop 
wanting to do updates like five minutes before you're about to deliver, right? Now, we've all been there. However, it is something you definitely want to check. Don't be that trainer that doesn't check their equipment, that doesn't test it, and uh, definitely doesn't, you know, make sure everything's functioning beforehand. Don't be that trainer. Next one, don't be the trainer that pushes students to focus on activities for too long. What do I mean by that? Well, statistics and science has shown us that recently people's attention spans are really dropping. They're really dropping. And Stanford has even shown this potentially down to three minutes now before someone starts to switch off and start to think about doing a different activity, right? So you need to start to be that trainer, the, the advanced trainer that actually acknowledges people's attention spans drop. So why would you put them into an activity that goes for 15, 20, 35 minutes? Yeah, there's all context for all of that. But start to think about how can you vary things up and create moments of faster and sharper transition between things, if that makes sense. So don't be that trainer. They expect people to concentrate for longer periods. And that ties back to number one, which is, I think, was, yeah, or number two, which is don't give, you know, making sure that you give consistent regular breaks there. Next one, don't be that trainer. Now, I really hate to say this one because I know so many of the people watching this channel, your company insists on this, right? But you've always got a choice. You've always got a choice. Don't be that trainer that only ever uses PowerPoint. PowerPoint is just one medium, one way to get your message across. But guess what, folks? It's okay to occasionally turn off the screen, God forbid. It's okay to actually get people to do different activities. It's okay to turn off that PowerPoint, right? Don't be that trainer that is just thinking that PowerPoint is the only way to do it. Because it's not. It's not. And every time you turn on that screen, folks, internally your audience are having reactions. And I'm going, oh, I hope the next slide is going to be better than the last one, right? Guaranteed that's coming up for people. And guaranteed... People are craving variety. People are craving interactive sessions. People are craving physical activity. People are craving a bit of VAK balance or whatever. Anything other than just PowerPoint, right? So next one is, don't be that trainer that is overly critical or negative towards learners. Be the trainer that is enhancing people's performance, uplifting them, and inspiring them. Don't be that trainer that's putting people down, right? We've all met them, we all know them, and we all walk away from them, or we wish that they had, they, that they had the aha moment of, maybe you want to magnify greatness, not just go in there and destroy people's learning identity or learner identity, right? So you want to be building people up. Don't be that trainer that's pushing people down. Next one is overwhelm. Unconsciously creating overwhelm in learners, right? And we find this a lot where a trainer doesn't have conscious awareness around what they're saying, how much they're saying at any point in time, right? So you want to be the trainer that's very good at chunking and scaffolding. Don't be that trainer that is saying too much at one time and people are going, oh, don't be that trainer. Now, the next one and uh, one to finish on here, folks, is the idea that not really understanding how the brain processes information, don't be the trainer or that trainer that shows something or hands out something and expect people to read as you are talking. Read as you are talking. Because what we need to realize is, and you can check out the research on this in the pen principles, but People cannot read and listen to you or to the trainer at the same time. They just can't. So if you're going to hand out something, give people to die, some time to digest it. Or if you're showing something on the slide, give people time to read it. And then you talk. All right? You cannot expect your learners to hear you and read at the same time. It takes up the same place in the brain at the same time. So you cannot overload people and do that. It just doesn't work, right? You're going to have people going, steam coming out of the room. Please be quiet as I read. Please, please, please. Right. So 
hopefully you got some value from this and you know maybe you've been guilty of one of these things where you've become that trainer and accidentally done one of those things or maybe you've come across the a lot of those trainers right but i'm sure if you're watching this channel you are definitely someone that's moving towards becoming an advanced trainer or a master trainer or someone that's just becoming so self-aware that you're like oh yeah i'm going to take on some of these ideas yeah absolutely i'm going to take some personal responsibility yeah absolutely i'm going to take charge what happens in my room i'm going to get curious and how do i make my bring my results even better in the training room so on that note folks thank you for watching this video and we're wrapping it up on don't be that trainer thanks for watching team and we'll see you on the next one